Hey, how's it going? And today I'm excited to bring in this tutorial about working in Vegas Pro 17 with the new nested timelines feature. It's really just an improvement on what they already had. I think they've been pretty upfront about that, that this is just kind of reconfiguring tools that were already within Vegas. I have a lot to explain. I hopefully I won't get too sidetracked on things. Hopefully it will be of help to you to help understand nested timelines. So the primary purpose of a nested timeline is as an organizing tool when you're working on long or complicated projects. So I don't know how many Vegas users fall into that category. Personally worked on a 90 plus minute project and I ended up not using nested timelines, but I'll show you the method that I use to work on the project. Because when you're working on a project, of course, if you're, if it's, let's say it's a 30 minute project, you could have three or 400 shots and all kinds of audio and pictures and things like that. So if we're looking at this graphic here, let's just talk about a couple of basic things. So you open a project in Vegas, like there's a project right here that we have. I have have these be just seven pictures on the timeline but it could be you're working on a project and you've got let's say four videos two audio tracks and a picture now all those are going to be stored when you go to save this out as a veg file basically vegas pros project file is a veg file okay, i got four videos two audio tracks and a picture they're all going to be stored in a veg file one of the things though is that when you have a veg file it must be able to link to your original source files now it doesn't alter those files but it needs to be able to find those files if those files get renamed if they get misplaced or if they get corrupted themselves, Vegas will crash. It won't work because Vegas will be looking for this project file or trying to render it and it'll have a problem with the file. And so under a render, Vegas will crash. Under just editing, it'll say, I can't find the file. And usually when you open a veg file and it can't find the file, it'll tell you, I can't find the file. And it'll ask, where is it? What'd you do with it? That's understandable, but it can become problematic when you're talking about having hundreds of clips and, and it just one clip gets renamed or misplaced or corrupted. It can kind of cause problems for your whole project. So anyway, but that's what a veg file is. It's clear a project folder for all of your source files. It doesn't alter those files, but it needs to know where they are. So you can imagine now, let's say you're working on a huge project, like a 90 minute project, and let's say you've got a thousand clips. Well, you can just imagine how convoluted the timeline's gonna get with that many files. So you're gonna need to break your project down into maybe 10 minutes or by scenes or something like that. So each scene becomes its own veg file. So what you end up with is then something like this, where you've got your veg files. You've got multiple veg files and you have them all on one parent master timeline which is a veg file itself so like this is an untitled project right now i can say if i go to save this project and i go save as i can just call it parent call it save so this project as it is right now is saved as a veg file, a parent veg file. Now, if I wanted to go in and bring a veg file actually into this project, I could do that and just simply by going go file, import, media, and I could just, let's say if I had this clouds veg file, I could just open it and it's gonna come in as its own, <laughs> I got a little error there. It's gonna come in as its own veg file. So now I've got my original parent veg file and I've just imported another veg file. It used to be that if I wanted to edit this veg file, if I wanted to drill into it, Vegas would have to open a new, whole new instance of Vegas. Now under the new system, the new Vegas 17, that won't happen. So what I would do is I just come down here to these icons here and I just say open nested timeline. I click this and now I've drilled into that file, that veg file that I had on my timeline. And you can see it's importing all the data. In fact, here's one of the issues is on that veg file, it can't find the source file. So now it's kind of hanging me up because of that connection to the source file. You can just cancel out of this. Now let's say I've drilled down. I had a one project on the veg master parent timeline. I just drilled into a veg file that I imported. Now I'm in that file. This is a clouds one veg file. But now let's say I've made some edits in here and I wanna go back to that, I just come back here and I go to open and it's gonna take me back to the original file that I was working on, the parent veg file. So if I can talk about this here, one of the key improvements really with Vegas 17 now is that you have this improved interface navigation. It's easy to jump between nests and the parent. It's easy to create nested files. There's no separate instances of Vegas that have to be opened up to drill down and open a veg file. And so there has this improved navigation and there's no separate instances is a Vegas so and that's working with the veg files if I go a little further and I have to talk about the downsides of nesting these are some of the issues that I see the biggest problem I see with the veg, the nested files is that they're still tied to the original source files and like you just saw earlier if I drill down into a veg file 
or one of those files gets corrupted during rendering, the whole program has a tendency to crash. And that would be in any program that's based kind of this way. It's looking for those source files, and if it can't find them, <laughs> I keep kidding, there's a bit of error here. But anyway, if I drill into a veg file and I can't find one of the source files, it, it can be a big mess. And especially if you're working on a big project, that can be a big headache. The other thing is that it can just get confusing jumping between these nests of folders. So sometimes you drill down in and you're not really even sure where you are half the time. And then accidents happen. And then of course, crashes can happen. So let me do this. So I'll save this parent veg file. And let me do this now just to show you kind of this veg thing, nested files in action here. So I'm just going to close out of this file and I'm going to go into open and I'm going to go to photo wall. And now I'm going to open this photo wall project. And this is a nested project named photo wall veg dot veg. So that is the master parent timeline within that project, that veg file project file, there's seven veg files. I don't know how compatible this will be because it's an earlier veg file from another version of Vegas. It might crash on me. If you come on here and you're looking at this timeline, you're not really sure if you're seeing everything. One thing you can do is come down here and click this the zoom edit tool and then just when you see that magnifying glass just click on your timeline and see the uh, the whole project what we've got here is we've got the photo wall is the master parent project and it's housing these seven veg files and let me go back to the normal edit tool here if i click on one of these files like let's say i click on this comp 5 is a it's its own veg file it's right here comp 5 if i click on that file and then i come down here i can just click here and open that as its own separate veg file now i am getting an error but i think that's because again some of the media files it couldn't open so but anyway now i'm inside that comp5 veg file and I can do editing in here, make changes, and then go back to my master, come down here and click on this, and I can go back to my master project with my seven veg files inside of it. That's why I say it can get a little confusing sometimes because you're going in and out of these veg files. But the good thing is with this improved navigation, it's a little less confusing and it is sometimes prone to crash for various reasons. So I don't know. It's something to consider. But now what I wanted to talk about is the way that I work in long projects. And it's a way that I, I've found that is very stable had good results with it. We'll see if Magic looks at doing something like this. So what I do when I'm working on a long project is if let's say I'm working on a 90 minute project, I'd break the project into, into nine separate veg files and then render each veg file as an MXF file and then bring those files back in under a master timeline. I'll kind of give you an example of that. So here for every one of these MXF files, I would have a veg file. So this would be like veg file one. I would render out an MX file and have veg file two project files. So let's say I'm working on a 50 minute project. So I break the scenes into 10 minute increments. For the first 10 minutes, I would create a veg file, call that veg file one, and then I would make all my edits and then I would render out an MXF file for that. The second 10 minutes, the 10 to 20 minute mark, I would create a veg file two and then render out an MXF file for that. So in the end, I would bring all these MXF files into Vegas and then edit on those. I can show you what, what that involves. So let's say I'm working on these clips right here and I've got seven clips. So what I would do is I, and this is, let's say veg file, this parent veg, but let's say it's veg. This is my first 10 minutes of my movie. And I would go file. I first, I would set it on the highest quality settings, which is usually, I usually do 32 bit best and, or whatever your best settings are, whatever you consider the best settings to be. And then I would come in here to file and then I would go render as, and then I'd come to Sony XAVC and then I would choose whatever format I wanted to render out in. And this is a very high quality codec. It's intraframe, so that means that it doesn't rely on other frames to decode. When this file renders out, you're not going to be able to play it on a, a video player. It can only really be edited and viewed in Vegas itself. So it's a very high quality rendering to do. So like, let's say I came in here and I was going to do high def. I would just click on that. I'd give it a name. Let's say I'll just call it scene one or something like that. I'd say scene one. I'd go render. And now this file is going to render out as an MXF file. Then once it's done rendering, I would bring that file back into Vegas under a master timeline under its own veg project. And I'd have like my 10 MXF files. 
And when this file renders back out, I'm going to have a video track and an audio track. And I can edit all that on the timeline. An MXF file is basically an editable file and it's almost of archival quality. And so I really recommend rendering out your, breaking your scenes down by veg files, taking each veg file that you, like in 10 minute increments or whatever, and then rendering those out as MXF files, bringing those MXF files back into a master timeline and then doing any more edits and combining them all back together on a master timeline. So now this is finished rendering out. Here's where my file rendered to. So it's an MXF file. So I just click on this here, scene one, and go open. And now it comes in as an MXF file. And I can say yes to this. Now this is basically all of this footage in a VEG file rendered out as an MXF file. Now this MXF file, I can go in this and edit this in any way that any way that I want. It's mixed down all of this into one video track and one audio track. Let's say I worked on another 10 minutes of the project, I would turn around and render that out as an MXF file too. So then eventually I'd have five MXF files all on one timeline. I could join them together, I could edit them, I can do color correction on them and render it all out. Now the advantage of using this MXF method is that this MXF file is freestanding now and it's no longer connected to the source file. So the MXF file that you've rendered out, it has all your footage and all your pictures and everything compiled. So it's no longer attached to the source file. So then it's a very portable file then because you don't have to worry about your source files. These files can also be then selectively edited on the timeline. So if this MXF file, let's say I thought one scene was running too long on here, I can split this clip still. I can fade in and out audio. I can still do everything I want to do, all the editing I want to do on this MXF file itself and get really good results. So when I re-render this, when I re-render the final master timeline of all my MXF files, I'm going to have a high quality rendering. This method of using the MXF files, to me, it's easier to understand than the nesting. I just feel like the nesting can be a little too confusing sometimes. And the other thing I'll say is that once you render out an MXF file, it's very stable. Honestly, I've never had an MXF file crash on me. Like I said earlier, I can't tell any difference between an MXF file that's been re-rendered and a VEG file that's been rendered. I can render this out right now, and then I can render this out, and I won't be able to see any difference between the two. I don't see any appreciable loss in quality. Now, of course, the system isn't perfect, and there are some downsides to it if you're working with the MXF files. And one is that the files do need to be rendered. So when I go to render this, of course, this 10 minute clip or whatever the length of the clip was, that's gonna take some time to do. Because the MXF files mix down the audio, if I wanted to make changes to the audio, I'd actually have to go back into the original VEG file and make the changes there and then re-render out the MXF file. So that's kind of a pain. But I think the advantage that you get is that you have these solid MXF files with basically all your clips compiled into it. It becomes extremely portable, it's extremely editable, and it rarely crashes. If you were working on a 90 minute movie, Movie, I would recommend rendering them out as MXF clips and editing and using those MXF clips to put the whole thing together versus using the VEG files. Now you can try using VEG files and see how it goes but I think you're really on the safe side with the MXF file. I hope I don't mean to discourage you from using nested files and you should certainly play around with it, but just realize that it does take some time and practice and don't be surprised if you get, you know, a little confused and a little turned around in working with them. The thing I don't like the most about it is that it re VEG files retain those connections to those original source files. And if those files, like I said, if just one of them gets renamed or moved or corrupted, it will bring the whole thing to a halt, especially on a, on a render. That's the one reason that I really prefer the MXS files over working in the VEG files, especially on, on long projects. So anyway, that's all I had to say. I hope you found this uh, some help. So take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.